Dan Burisk, born in California in 1964, studied microbiology and psychology at the University of Las Vegas, Nevada. He graduated in 1986 and did a Ph.D. in microbiology in 1989 in the state of New York. A sports fan since he was a kid, he played basketball. But his true passion was the sciences and at the age of five he was given his first microscope, after which he later became the youngest member of the Los Angeles Microbiology Society. In 1986 he received an unexpected visit at the University of Las Vegas, the so-called secret government of the United States. Two of those men, in military uniform, offered to work on a top-secret project where they could put their talent to work at a maximum level. In 1987 he began working at a Nevada state government office related to prison parole. In 1989 he began receiving tissue samples. Burisk examined them in another place and sent the report to the place of origin of the same. In 1989 he worked on a secret project and also on the so-called Sharp Storm. But in 1994 he was taken to an underground place called Century 4 which is part of Area 51, where he started working on the Aquarium project. There he learned that the military were in possession of ships and extraterrestrial beings. In one department there was information about beings called Orions, beings from the star system Z Reticuli. Also a copy of the agreement made by President Eisenhower, beings called P-50 and the so-called Orions. In a place called the Bay of Galileo, Burisk could see different types of spacecraft. One of them was the ship that Bob Lasser, a former NASA worker who made Area 51 known in the 80s. Another of the ships he saw was the one that crashed in Roswell in 1947. According to Burisk, we have a misguided concept of aliens. It clarifies that aliens and extraterrestrials are not the same. But aliens are beings that come from other planets, and that extraterrestrials are human in the future and that they travel in time to solve certain problems, but they are from the Earth, because these are actually the evolution of the human being during thousands of years. They are distinguished into four groups. They are classified with the letter P, which means present time and the years that lead us in the future. For example, Roswell's are P24. That is, present time plus 24,000 years in the future. The others are known as, J-Rod P45, J-Rod P52 and P54. He says that these J-Rod suffer from a very painful illness and he participated in this project to try to find a cure. He claimed to have taken blood samples a female of these beings and that for two years worked on this project studying the being. He assures that they came to establish a friendly relationship and that in one of the face-to-face -face meetings, this one skipped the protocol pouncing on him. He telepathically transmitted a large amount of information in which he could know that two-thirds of humanity died in a nuclear catastrophe. A part of the people hid underground to survive and others did it on the surface. 24,000 years later the most advanced beings on Earth could travel in time which is why they traveled to Roswell in 1947. Roswell's ship was really a time machine. They did not come from another planet but from the Earth. According to Colonel Philip J. Corso, 1914-1997, who wrote the book The Day After Roswell, beings were made to travel in space-time. They had two brains, one of them to control the ships. And they did not reproduce. He also affirmed that the ship was the key to technological progress. Other groups survivors to the extinction, evolved in the Moon, Mars and finally in Orion, where the P-52 come from, or the Orions, which, in spite of being terrestrials, also colonized these other places. The P-45 would be the most Machiavellian, thirsty for nuclear catharsis to pass in our future in order to justify its existence. These are responsible for the majority of abductions. They lack emotional empathy. Eisenhower met with these extraterrestrial groups in order to avoid the obvious nuclear catastrophe. In this meeting diplomatic discussions between civilizations were made and an agreement was adopted to abduct human beings in order to study them, provided they did not suffer or remember anything of what happened. The Orions gave President Eisenhower a cube about 8 cm wide by another 8 cm long capable of predicting the future. 
it was passed between rich and powerful to be able to choose well in their lives. Burisk worked directly under the orders of Majestic 12. One of his most important statements are those related to the Stargates. They are devices made in the Earth, but with extraterrestrial technology. According to Dr. Burisk, the information on how to make them is in the Sumerias tables. They were used to communicate with other extraplanetary civilizations. With them you could access a wormhole. Next to this enormous apparatus, there was a platform that allowed to throw the object to the wormhole to travel to other stars, teleporting people or materials from one place to another instantly. But Burisk says it is not very reliable and that he saw a person die during one of the experiments. This device is also known as looking glass and was used to see probabilities of future events. As they saw, the catastrophe would happen because of these stargates. According to the doctor, there are 50 stargates on Earth. Although all the stargates have apparently been dismantled, we are still in danger of extinction today.